I was of a similar age group to the guys in the in the 66-67 the team. So I got to know them fairly well and people nowadays wouldn't quite understand how far away Europe really was. It was almost incomprehensible to think that someone could take five months out of their lives, out of their, their education or their wage earning life to go away to play rugby. Their, their total livelihood disappeared for the best part of half a year. As youngsters growing up, we, we didn't think it was such a hardship. We were just enthralled uh, with the fact that such an adventure was possible. And in, in the old days, of course, um, they went by boat. It was the tour, if you were too young for one tour, you were too old for the next. And it, it was the tour of tours. Don't forget, uh, in that, on that tour, Ramrick had seven players out of, um, out of 30. So we were given quite a bit of sting on tour by the other people. <laughs> where, where were the other eight Ramrick players? <laughs> Ramwick had, uh, I suppose you go through years of the freak era. Uh, we had Catchpole, we had uh, Hawthorne, in fact that year, particularly before we went away, we had three centres all picked from the same team, which was a bit unique, myself, John Francis and uh, Phil Smith. Tony Moore outstripping the opposition, puts the ball down for another random try. We had, we had great players and from time to time I would talk to them about the team that started to come into prominence, for me at least, in 63 probably when they went to South Africa and, and drew the test series in South Africa and no Wallaby team had ever done that and they put together a very, very good forward pack that could hold their own with the, with the Springboks who were the masters of forward play. And all of the Wallaby forwards of that era would say to me, no, 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 forget about our forward pack, we had catchy. It was just something else. He, he was so much better than everyone else it was almost that he was playing on another level. Two of the senior administrators of my club, Wally Ma and Cyril Towers, who had been members of the 27-28 Waratahs, Wally asked Cyril to come and watch um, Scots College play a pre-season trial match. He said there's a very special player there, play scrum half, his name's Ken Catchpole. I think that one day he may be the greatest scrum half the world's ever seen. And that was in 1957. And then 1958, Catchy played uh, his first year with the club in Colts. And the next year, 1959, he played, went straight from Colts into first grade and then straight into the, the Waratahs against the British Lions. Well, I, I first saw Ken play against the British Lions in 1959 at the Sydney Sports Ground. And he, he was, I think he was 19 at the time. And I was just mesmerised by the ability that Ken had. And uh, somehow deep inside me, I, I wanted to play a game with him at one stage and thinking what an honour that would be to play with the great Ken Catchpole and uh, eventually got to do that which was one of the most satisfying early parts of my rugby career and I think one of the great memories from playing outside Ken in the early days was uh, as a young kid he said to look at me in the eye and he said Jimmy do you want the ball lace up or lace down in other words you don't want to catch it with the lace up there or down here and I to this day I still don't know whether he was serious or not but he sort of had the the, the ability that he could he could play to that level. After impressing for the Waratahs in 1959, Catchpole was selected for Australia in 61 and promptly dispatched for the short tour of South Africa as both captain and coach of the Wallabies. He was just 21 years of age. Fifth Wallaby Rob Hemming was there. I think he played brilliantly. He, he did the job. I mean, he's the most impressive footballer I've, I've ever played with. The great, simply the greatest, I think that's all I can say about Ken. The catchpole Johnson era was so great that referees couldn't believe they weren't cheating. They were so quick at getting the ball into the scrum and out again. But that wasn't without hours and hours of practice that catchpole and Johnson wouldn't do together. Uh, it didn't come easy for them, but um, they were ardent supporters of practice makes perfect. In 2017, Catchy was living in Sydney with artist wife June. His teammates remember him still as the greatest player ever. But for the great man himself, such memories have been lost in the fog of Alzheimer's disease. Mm. My international career started in 1959 
when I represented for New South Wales against the British Lions. I've made tours to the British Isles, New Zealand twice and South Africa twice. I played in 27 test matches and captain Australia 13 times. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Glover trying to cut inside Cardi. This is hot on the I'm reminded every time I'm asked to speak about Catchy that when the 67, 66, 67 Wallabies played England and at the aftermatch dinner, the president of the RFU uh, addressed the, the gathering and said, gentlemen, uh, this afternoon we've been privileged to have seen in action <clears throat> perhaps the finest scrum half the world's ever seen. <laughs>